Hi, I'm Sarah Mehmet, the Social Work Librarian at EMU. In this short video, I'm going to introduce you to research tools and strategies that you can use for your assignments in Social Work 222. I'm going to get started just with a brief welcome and introduction to library support that's available to you. I'll give you a quick tip for getting ready to do your research for this class. And then I'll talk about how the Social Work 222 research guide um, can help you with the abbreviated literature review and history policies and advocacy paper assignments. As a social work librarian, that means I'm available to help you with library research and any other questions about library resources and services. You can find my contact information on this presentation, on the library guide that I'll show you. So please feel free to email or call me or set up a time to meet with me on Zoom or in person. There's also general library support you can use whenever you have questions. Before you dive into typing in a search to find some information, it makes sense to take a few minutes to look at your assignments so you'll know exactly what it is you need to find. Find the abbreviated literature review and the history policies and advocacy paper assignments and check on what questions do you need to answer? How many sources do you need to use? Um, and are there any guidelines for the types of sources that you'll need to use in these assignments? This is a good idea to for any assignment, of course, that you're doing research for. Once you're familiar with the assignment, go to the Social Work 222 Library Guide. You can find this by going to the Canvas Core Shell for 222 and looking for the Library Guide link in the course navigation. You can also find it from the library website. This guide has key sources that students have used for these assignments in the past. They include library subscription sources that are only available when you log in through the library links, and also some general websites that are particularly useful for this assignment. I'm, I'll demonstrate how to use two of those sources, the Encyclopedia of Social Work and eSearch, to find and answer questions about the four sources you need for your abbreviated literature review. So on the Social Work 222 Research Guide, on the first page under Academic and Professional Reference Sources, the first link you'll see is the Encyclopedia of Social Work. And the Encyclopedia of Social Work is a library subscription resource that if you are using from off campus, you may be asked to log in. You can both browse for particular subject areas and see what articles are available, or you can type in the specific topic that you are planning to focus on. I'll do an example of looking for the topic of food insecurity. Now, most of the topics you'll be looking at for your assignments in this class will have one or two sources in the Encyclopedia of Social Work, but not necessarily all of them. However, it's always a good idea to start here because it is very focused on social work related information. Um, I see an article, Food Insecurity, that I can click on and I'm not going to go over the whole article right now, but I'll just point out a few features that it provides a summary of the article to give you an idea of what questions it will answer. And also on the left, the contents, which again, can give you an idea of how it will help you answer the questions you'll need to for both the abbreviated literature review and the history policies and advocacy paper assignment. In the abbreviated literature review, you need to figure out the credentials of the author. An encyclopedia of social work will list an author or authors at the top. And if you click on the name, you can find a little bit of information. For example, in this case, I can see the author's name and the particular college and institution they're available at. 
to find more information about this author's credentials, I'll, I would just do a general web search. Check the spelling with the name and the institution this person is at. And if somebody is an active instructor, academic or researcher, you should be able to find information on them through web search um, and the hopefully the organization or school that they work at. So I can find this author, um, find a little bit about their expertise and background that I could use to answer that question about what are this author's credentials. So that's a great way to find out that piece of that assignment. The next source you might use for the abbreviated literature review is eSearch. And back on the Social Work 2222 Research Guide, eSearch is in the section for articles and books. So I'll go down to that second section. And it's the same search you would find on the main page of the library website. It lists pretty much everything that the library has, both in print and online. And I can type in a topic. Again, I'll use the example food insecurity to start getting some results to look through. When you get results from eSearch, you may um, you usually find a lot, I see over 610,000. I might choose to make these results a little more specific if I'm really most interested in finding information about this topic within the United States, for example. I'm going to add United States to my search. So I narrow it down, hopefully to the U.S. focus instead of other countries. And I can see that I'm starting to find some more detailed information about, I see adults and children experiencing food insecurity. Um, see something on college students. Maybe I'm interested in that. I can use that quick link option to see an abstract or a summary, and again, fit, read that and find out how might this help me learn more about this topic. Other tools that you'll see in eSearch include this icon with the quotation marks for cite this item. That can be very handy. If you click on that, it'll ask you to choose a citation format. I'll choose APA, which is what we use in social work, and it gives me um, a reference that is usually pretty well formatted in APA style. So I could copy and paste that and save it in a document. One thing to remember with any tool like this is that when it's computer generated, it may or may not be completely accurate, but it's a good start that I could double check um, and use. So there are other options in eSearch. For example, if I look over on the left, I can narrow down the publication date, maybe if I want things from the last five years. And there are other features there. I won't show all of them to you right now, but know that by using these options on the side and by maybe trying some different search words, you can always find um, some more and different resources in eSearch. For the history policies and advocacy paper, the Encyclopedia of Social Work and eSearch are good sources to use again. You may actually reuse some of the sources you found through those two from your abbreviated literature review and build on that in the history policies and advocacy paper. But you're going to need more information. So I'm going to show you two more sections of the Social Work 222 research guide that I think are especially useful for answering the long list of questions you'll answer in this paper. So going down to the back to the Social Work 222 guide and going down to the third section, policy and advocacy groups. There's a search box, search public policy groups and think tanks. And this is a specialty Google search. So it searches websites but it doesn't search all websites. It searches those of about 1,200 organizations, think tanks, and public policy groups 
that focus on analysis and research of prob- policies, problems, and topics, some of which may be related to what your topics you're studying in this class. So again, I can type in um, a few words describing my topic and take a look at what I get. And I'm again seeing um, some things on food insecurity in the U.S., one on teens, some that are in California. Um, and I can just click through to look at these like any any other website. One thing to keep in mind, well, I think this search is great because it's not searching everything that's out there on the web. You, you'll want to take a look at who are the organizations of these websites to make sure that they're ones that are really on target and on topic for your particular assignments. And you'll notice when you do the crap test assignment, that's when you'll dive into again, what are the credentials and the authority of the organizations who produce the reports on these websites. But I'll go down to the fourth section of this website, Government Information and Statistics, and show you just one more key source that is really useful for this class. And that's the first link, the Congressional Research Service Reports. This is a government office that reports on topics of public interest or that are the focus of proposed legislation in Congress. So they're not affiliated with the Democrats or the Republicans, they're nonpartisan. So they should be providing unbiased information on these topics. And I can type in a topic and see what I find. Um, see one that's global, I might be less interested in this. I might be interested in food insecurity among college students. Um, for example, I can also try some different words. If in looking at other sources on food insecurity, I learned that SNAP is the name of one of the main government food programs, that could be a good word to search on. So I'll go ahead and type in SNAP and see that I am finding some things about Social Security and SNAP. Um, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is what SNAP stands for, and find some sources on that. And I'll bring up just one on SNAP um, to show you what these are like. They provide usually a nice summary at the beginning, and they'll provide some detailed contents. Again, so you can figure out if this is going to help you answer the questions that you need to answer for this assignment. So that was a quick look at just a few of the sources that are on this guide, but those, these are the ones that I would recommend starting at. The other information that you'll find on these guide pages that I want to be sure you don't miss is that on every page on the right-hand side, under Get Research Help, you'll find information for General Library Research Help. And if you scroll down a little further, this is where you'll find my contact information. So you can use the link to email me. You've got my phone number and email address there. And you can also use the schedule appointment link to find out exactly when I'm available and automatically set up a time to meet with me over Zoom or in person if you prefer. The Ask a Librarian 24-7 that you see under Get Research Help is available 24-7, and it is a live chat with an actual real librarian, somebody like me, not always me, because it's 24-7, but it's not a bot. Um, you'll talk to a real librarian. They might be from another school. That's how we make it available 24-7. But I found that they can almost always help you answer the questions because they're experienced at helping similar students at similar schools. So know that asking for help is a learning strategy used by successful students. So I really hope you will get in touch with me or the li other library help when you have questions or get stuck. As librarians, 
we really want you to succeed in your assignments and learn research skills that you're going to continue to use in this class and other classes in your career and in your life. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video and please do get in touch um, whenever I can help out. Bye.